My name is Matt Brown, and this is my colleague, Liliana Lozano. And we are here at the Kids Voting Live Election Results Show at Town Hall. And later in the night, we are going to be sharing the voting results of the top races in, of 2014. Same of these, some of these, t some of these top races include area, governor, do you want senator, the governor, you have to treasurer, it. attorney general, and the four ballot questions. But first, let's hear from Bella and Lindsay about the background of kids voting. So, what is kids voting? So, kids voting is a K through 12, kindergarten through 12th grade curriculum for civics in the state and public schools. And the goal of kids voting, and it culminates with kids going to the polls and voting. Um, in their own voting area with ballots that are printed for them. And uh, we're counting, actually, we're counting the ballots now. And as soon as we get the final count, we'll report how many kids voted and who they voted for. And um, there's four questions and how they voted on the questions. You know, the goal of kids voting is to really um, get kids comfortable with feeling like it is their responsibility to vote when they become 18 and to become an informed voter, not just check off a box, but to have studied ahead. So what is your role in kids voting? Um, I have been the chair of kids voting. Right now I'm co-chair. Um, Lynn Jarden co-chairs with me. She's the principal at the Gibbons School. Um, and we started the program in 1998. And um, my role, because I was an active member of the League of Women Voters, which is a nonpartisan organization, because kids voting is nonpartisan, it doesn't support candidates or anything else, it really is just about the actual activity of voting. So um, they asked me to, to chair the committee because I was a voter service person and not somebody affiliated with any candidates or anything like that. <clears throat> Why are you involved? You know, probably it was my League of Women Voters work in the very early years. I'm thinking could have been 30 years ago that I started with the Stoughton League of Women Voters. And I think it's important for people to vote. I think they should do their civic duty. I think if people want to complain about our government, they need to take part in it. So that's personally why I give the time I give. So how important is kids voting compared to the actual adult voting? Well, the votes aren't actually counted or reported, so um, it doesn't really count. Um, and obviously the adult voting is much more important. And again, you know, the goal of kids voting is for all of you. And now we've been doing it long enough so that we have kids who were in kids voting at your age who are now over 18 and they're all voting. Um, so I think that if we really looked at the numbers of Stoughton kids voting after age 18, we would see a much bigger number than in some other towns. Is the kids voting uh, across like the rest of the country or just in Massachusetts? Well, actually, there's Kids Voting USA, which is a large organization, um, and many of the states, like Kansas and Ohio and some of those, North Carolina, they do kids voting. Their governments are set up different than Massachusetts. Massachusetts has a lot of little cities and towns. These states have big counties. So kids voting is done by county, which would be like many towns. So um, for Massachusetts, it's quite different. When we first started kids voting in Stoughton, there were probably a dozen other cities and towns in Massachusetts that chose to do it. Now, I'm actually going to say that we might be one of the few towns that still does it um, in Massachusetts, because it requires a lot of volunteers. It requires a lot of donations from the business community in order to print the ballots and things like that. And it requires a you know, big, concerted, dedicated effort on the part of the teachers and schools to get the kids involved in the curriculum. But the curriculum comes from Kids Voting USA. Um, and maybe Lynn will talk more about how they use the curriculum in the schools. OK, thank, thank you. you so very much. Thank you. Bye. Now let's have a word from Kara, who is in the conference room getting a first-hand look in the kids' voting process. So Pat, what is the process when a child arrives at the school to vote? 
Well, the kids come to the polling place with their parents, and the parents will go off to the... Oh, I'm sorry. He didn't tell me that. <laughs> the <ki> Hi there. Hi. <laughs> so the children will go to the polling place with their parents. Yeah. And the parents will go off and vote in the uh, adult area, and the children will go up to the kids' voting table. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the volunteers, we have over 100 volunteers, will ask the student or the child um, what their last name and first name is. They'll find them in the listing we have of all the school children in town. We check it off, just like we would do at the parent election. Um, then they're given a ballot, and our ballots, uh, if I can just grab one, are um, have photos on them. Huh. So all the candidates are listed on here with the photographs of, um, so that there's some facial recognition. Yeah. And then we have the four questions on the bottom. Um, so they, they go over to a polling booth. They, they fill it out just as their parents would. Then they bring it back. They put it in a little ballot box. And they're given a little sticker that says, I voted. Huh. That's, that's the process. And now how do you bring the ballots from the schools to town hall? So then the volunteers at the, last shift, at the last shift, we run kids voting from 2 to 8 p.m. And the last shift, they, the volunteers will bring the ballot box with the ballots in all the supplies back to town hall. And here we have 10 or 15 uh, wonderful volunteers who are counting the ballots and resorting things to uh, get us ready for next year. Ah. And now how do you count the ballots? By hand? Well, we actually have a spare ballot counter that the town clerk gives to us, uh, and we're very grateful for that. Um, and we have counted two-thirds of the ballots so ah. far at uh, 8 o'clock, and we think maybe that the battery is dead hmm. on that, so we oh. may have to hand count the last batch. Now, how many kids vote each year on average? Generally, it's between 12 and 1,500. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a, a little under 4,000 in the school system. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Now, what is the majority age of most voter, of the children voters, like younger or older? Oh, it, it really is the whole range. We, we, uh, the program is for children in grades K to 12, um, and it really is a nice cross-section. Oh, wow. Yeah. Back to you, Matt and Lindsay. Now Julia and Jenny are going to inform us about how kids voting is educational. We're here with Ms. Jar Mrs. Jardin from the principal of the Gibbon School. How is kids voting educational? Kids voting gives children an awareness of the voting process and what it's like to live in a democracy and be able to have the opportunity to vote and elect officials that follow the same ideals that you do. Why do you encourage kids to vote? So that they can become a part of their community and then they can subsequently make changes to what happens in their community when they grow up and be adults and become more active in their community and just to see how things are run and have a say. How do you encourage the kids? We have programs, we have a curriculum that we teach and we give opportunities for students to vote and then we have them attend kids voting with their parents so that they go through the same process. They're able to sign in like an adult would sign in and then take a ballot and vote just like an adult would so that they get the sense that they are making a difference and then we hope that that will carry with them when they become old enough to vote. What are some of the different kids voting programs in the school? Um, we have activities where the kids can um, participate in voting like within their classroom. It might be something as simple as voting to decide um, what particular story they'd like to hear that day or it could be um, deciding on a program that happens in their school. Um, one of the activities we had this year was for two of the high school juniors who are part of kids voting created a video and then brought it to the elementary schools and showed it to all of our fifth graders and then they were able to ask questions about voting and the video told them all about the process of voting. And then at the high school, um, students were able to participate in a debate about the bottle bill. They heard both sides of the debate with representatives who came and spoke to them. Thank you. Back to Matt and Lily. That was very interesting, Jenny and Julia. Thanks for your input. Now let's have a word from Bella and Lindsay who are with Nicole and Dara from Stoughton High School who are part of the voting committee. Why did you want to get involved in the 
Um, so last year, our history teacher, uh, Mr. John Gallivan, who taught us AP history, he presented us with a really unique opportunity to participate in this group. And uh, kind of, it was vague at first, but we realized it would be something very interesting for us. And I thought it was a great thing to take advantage of. Um, at first, we really didn't know anything about uh, the inside workings of the program, we'd always just done kids voting, but uh, it really opened up our eyes, and that's kind of why we got involved, I think. Yeah, um, as Nicole said, that we've always voted ourselves, but we've never seen like how it works on the inside. So mostly it was just interested to see how like the voting process works and to um, be able to get involved with it and help other kids do the exact same thing that we love doing since we were like 11, I don't know, 8. <laughs> so what do you do? What is your role in kids voting? Um, so we like to think of ourselves as kind of uh, as the younger kids on the youngest, as a, uh, we kind of become a link to the kids that are our kids voting. Um, we appeal a lot to the more younger audiences. Um, uh, we did some presentations at the elementary school, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but uh, that was kind of a big part of our contributions to this program, is just kind of being somebody who can give input from what Ki kids the kids' point of view is and what they are looking for in the voting process and what they're looking for on the day of elections. Can you talk to us about the presentations you gave? Yeah. Um, so they were really fun. Uh, we had a great time with them. Um, so for two days, we skipped a little bit of school, but we, uh, we went to the elementary schools and gave presentations to the fifth grade classes of each elementary school. And we got to sit all the kids in one room. And we pretty much gave a presentation that was made by Daria. Um, and it went through all of the unique parts and cool parts of voting, things that people didn't know, people that things that people wanted to know, um, some facts, some statistics, what voting is, like really just, we got down to the nitty gritty cool stuff. So, and the kids really took a grasp on it. They loved it. Um, we got a lot of feedback from not only kids, but their teachers and their parents saying like, you did a great job and uh, we really liked your presentation. Some teachers asked us for the presentation afterwards. Um, also with it, there were we gave the, the kids an opportunity to ask questions. So when they asked a question, it was always really fun to see what the kids were asking, what they actually wondered about the process. So I think that was a great part. Um, and also, as Nicole said, how like the kids got more involved with uh, the presentation that we showed them. They like, understood what it was uh, to be voting. But what was really interesting is uh, the other day, while preparing for this day with kids voting, I was out, and there were some kids from the elementary schools that were the ones that we presented at, and they recognized me, and they were like, oh my gosh, this was the kids voting girl. And they were, um, they were talking to me about how they were now going to be participating in kids voting, because they learned so much about it from our presentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just really opened up our eyes to how we can affect kids in elementary schools. Does kids voting make you a better educated voter? Yes, <laughs> totally. Um, I think that, particularly for us, uh, I don't think everybody else gets this opportunity, but we've learned a lot about how how complex the counting the votes and Everything making sure scenes. everything behind the scenes, the stickers that you get, the pencils that you get, everything that the little things, we've learned a lot about that. But I do think that um, it does make me a well-informed voter to be part of this group. And also throughout elementary school, when I did kids voting, I always thought that the education component that went with it in school, like we would take a few days to talk about the kids voting process, which I guess you guys have done in school, and that always, uh, sparked my interest and made me want to pursue more educated voting. Um, and also in our schools, since uh, this year the kids were able to vote on like the three questions that were also on the ballot, we had a presentation at the high school about question two, the bottle bill, and that wouldn't have been possible without us being on the committee and like organizing with the high school, so that really informed us too about what else is on the ballot other than just the names and the faces and stuff. Yeah, it was good. When you are 18, are you going to partici participate in adult vo voting? Yes. Do we need to expand on that, or is this yes <laughs> enough? Yes is good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Back to you, Matt. Uh, now we're going to have Jenny and Julia. Now we are here with Amy Parsons. Amy Parsons from. 
Parsons. <laughs> Malcolm and Parsons. Well, Malcolm and Parsons. Why did you decide to sponsor Kids Voting? Well, we think that it's important to be involved with the community that we work and live in. How is your experience with Kids Voting? It's been very positive. It gets me more interested to understand more about the questions. And uh, I think it's a great civic responsibility of everyone to vote. Why is it why is kids voting good for kids? Because they're learning about the process of about being American and their responsibilities. What is your opinion on this program? I think it's an excellent uh, program for kids. Thank you for joining us. Back to Matt and Lily. That was very, that was really cool. Thank you for your time, Abney from Malcolm and Parsons. Now Carrie is going to have two volunteers. I happen to think that voting is one of the most important things that you can do as a citizen. And the earlier that you start, the better knowledge you have about the process. So as a person, an adult who's interested, I like to see young people getting in on it as soon as possible. As young as five years old, if they can. And how long have you been associated with the kids voting? This is my first year as a volunteer, and I'll do it every year from now on that I'm asked to. I really enjoyed it. And Beth, how long have you? Um, approximately 10 years. Ah. Now, in the voting process for kids voting, what do you guys do for, as the volunteers? Well, oh, well, we start planning. Um, like after this um, uh, voting, in two more years, we'll have another um, vote for president. And so we will start pretty, uh, about a year in advance, planning for the next election and um, doing what our presentations, getting our volunteers, um, deciding just what we need and getting fundraising, doing fundraising and things like that. Ah, so, and what is like the first step that you guys have to take in the process of preparing everything? Oh boy. <laughs> um, pretty much looking at, well, first of all, we're always trying to get <coughs> more sponsors. And the fundraising, I believe, is, the, uh, is usually um, our first effort is fundraising because that will decide you know, whether, how successful we are. Mm -hmm. And what are your fundraising, well, your fundraisers, well, fundraising, I don't know how to put that. Well, the people that have funded fund you this year. Well, we have, uh, and probably uh, Ms. Frapp can probably will uh, go over this, but we have sponsors from um, banks, um, insurance companies, um, just businesses and, and um, schools, the teachers, um, um, and um, a lot of just community people as well. So it's a variety of people that um, um, are sponsors. Um, we have like um, a lot of the business establishments. I mean, tonight um, we have pizza for our volunteers and a lot of the pizza shops here in Stoughton um, generously donated their pizza and Stop and shop. That's the food. Some yeah. food. So, <laughs> how do you guys find your well your volunteers? Uh, we advertise um, using the Penny Saver um, or in the Stoughton Journal. We advertise for volunteers, and um, Pat Basler, who is the um, director of the library, um, she handles all the volunteers. Uh, and what has been the most effective way of doing? Well, getting all the volunteers and sponsors this year. I think um, it's just through the, um, through the ads, and um, um, people have now gotten used to seeing student kids voting, and um, so we do a lot of um, advertisements through the Penny Saver and and um, the Stoughton Journal to get the word out. Plus, we do a lot through media. Um, there's a lot that is done through the schools and the websites and, and stuff like that. So. Uh, 
Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to for me to interview you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kara. Now, Kara, how did it feel being in the conference room seeing the committee count the votes? Well, I felt that it was very, well, very complex, um, well, system that they have. I've seen all the volunteers come in with the boxes, and there looks like there are thousands of votes so far, even though it's probably a little less. But it's really cool seeing everything. How do they count the votes? Do they do it by hand or with a machine? Well, we had a machine earlier today, and then they thought the battery died. So I'm not sure right now what they're doing, either counting it by hand or if the battery didn't really die. But it looks like it takes a lot of work to count them. Thank you, Kara. What are some interesting stats? Well, in 1998, is when kids voting started in Stone. It's the fifth governor election that kids voting will have. In 1998, 2002, and 2010, us kids have voted different, uh, different candidates than our adult, well, than our parents in Stone. In 2006, it was the only year that the kids and the adults both voted for the same candidate, who was Deval Patrick. Special thanks to our in-kind sponsors, Stoughton Modern Printing, Stoughton Penny Saver, Steve Fradkin, Randolph Savings Bank, Mal Malcolm and Parsons, Town Spa, Stoughton Pizza, Stelios, and Chateau. Special thanks to all these financial sponsors, Malcolm and Parsons, Prone Family Foundation, Stoyak, League of Women of Voters, Stoughton Chamber of Commerce, Lynn Jardin, KC Companies, Law Office of TJ Recupero, Bill and Paul Galvin, Fred and Nadine Team, Speya, Stoughton Teachers Association, Lou and Anita Kafka, and Brian A. Joyce. Also, a special thanks to all Kids Voting Committee members, to all of our guests tonight, John Galvin, Pat Besler, and Stoughton Town Clerk Amy Summers. We have the results for the kids voting um, results. Uh, for Governor and Lieutenant Governor, we have Baker, Coakley, Falchuk, Lively, M McCormick, Blanks. Baker's results is 391 votes. Coakley's results are 299 votes. Falchuk's results is 444 um, uh, votes. Lively, 25 votes. McCormick, 32 votes. Next, we have our Senator in Congress. We have Edward Markey. Brian Hutter, Blanks, and Higgins. For Edward Markey, we have 418 votes. For Brian Hur, we have 347 votes. And for a representative in Congress, we have, for Stephen Lynch, we have 604 votes. For Attorney General, we have Mara he he Healy, John and John Miller. Mara Healy has 463 votes, and John Miller has 299 votes. For Treasurer, we have <laughs> Deborah Goldberg, Michael Hefferman, Heffernan, Ian Jackson, and Blanks. For Deborah Goldberg, we have 362 votes. For Michael Heffernan, we have 308 votes. And for Ian Jackson, we have 116 votes. For state senator, we only had Brian Joyce. And he had 640 votes. State representative for 6th North, North Foot District, William Galvin had 628 votes. And lastly, for state representative 8th Norfolk District, we had Lewis. Kafka, and he had 615 votes.
Uh, and for our four ballot questions, um, we have eliminated gas tax in indexes. For the yes votes, we have 407. And for the no votes, we have 325. The second question was expanding beverage container deposit law. For the yes votes, we had 283 votes. And for the no votes, we had 453 votes. Uh, question three, of have expand prohi prohibited prohibition on gaming. We have yes, 271 votes. And for no, we have 456 votes. And lastly, for our last question, we have allow employees to earn and use sick time. For yes, we had 490 votes. For no, we had 246 votes. To recap, Baker wins the governor's race over Coakley, 391 to 299. For Senate, Markey beat Heller, he or her, 418 to 347 votes. Outro. 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 Thanks for joining us tonight at the Stoughton Kids Voting Election Results. This is Matt and Lily signing off. Thank Thanks you. so much for tuning in. Thank you.